after Red Hat. I'm very excited to be able to present at DevConf again this year, even if virtually. I hope next time we will be all in person and we can see each other. The topic is the today is the feedback about the deployment of an intelligent app. So we will consider machine learning models, deployment, and we're going to focus on the Python ecosystem first. But let's see what we have on, on the agenda of today. So Project Auth is the first topic we're going to address. Basically, we're going to see what is Project Auth and uh, what we do in Project Auth, what are our goals, uh, the integration that uh, Thoth uh, has, and how you can interact uh, with the Thoth services. The second topic is the MLOps relation. So we talk about this new pipeline that gives feedbacks about the deployments, but how does it fit in the MLOps context? Then we're going to see why, what, and when. So why we want to provide this pipeline, what we want to provide in this uh, feedback. So at the end of this feedback, what the user will uh, see, the data scientists and the AI DevOps engineers and when we're going to provide it. So what is the trigger to this pipeline? Then we're gonna see how you can use it. So if you want to test it and uh, where you can do it, uh, what do you need to install to use it. And uh, later at the end, we will see all the pieces of the pipelines. So what is the pipeline actually doing? And uh, an example of the results that are provided by this pipeline. So the feedback itself, how is shown and uh, how the user will see these results. But let's go one step ahead. So let's start with the project auth. So project auth is uh, an AI SOE uh, open source project and uh, has three main goals, let's say. The first that is that we want to help the developers in the selection of the software stack. So we want to provide a service that allows them to decide which software stack to use based on their requirements. What we mean by that? So when you select the software stack or when you start working on your project, you, you usually select some libraries like uh, TensorFlow, Matplotlib. These are typical libraries that you use in your uh, project. But uh, when you select this kind of uh, dependencies, you should know that uh, together with these uh, direct dependencies, there are also other packages which are installed together with TensorFlow. So there is NumPy, there are other uh, dependencies on NumPy. So there are different kind of layers of dependencies and these are called transitive dependencies. And this comes all with the packages that you install when you do just pip install TensorFlow, for example. So when you want to select these dependencies, it's not uh, trivial if you want to consider, for example, not the latest version. Maybe there are version or combination of uh, dependencies that can give you higher performance on maybe there are combination that can give you higher security, or if you're interested in uh, community projects and you want to know what, your, what are the best maintained projects in your software stack, then you can also find out this information. And so what Thought tries to give is a, a tool or a service that uh, would ease the selection of these dependencies based on the requirements. So I'm a data scientist, I need to do to train my model, I want the most performance software stack. So I can ask Todd for a recommendation of type uh, performance. Or maybe I want to put my model in production so my application is ready, I have my software stack. But uh, what are the dependencies that should I use in case of uh, security so that I don't find any CDE, any vulnerabilities that can impact basically my application? So all this question can be deliver and uh, by thought services. Another important goal that we have is to deliver optimized images. So if I, uh, if you follow this, uh, uh, let's say description of uh, the different recommendation that thought can provide, then you can see that uh, we can provide the optimized images for your application. So if you're working on natural language processing, if you're working on computer vision, then all this specific stack will have uh, specified dependencies and transitive dependencies, and each of them can basically be optimized for specific runtime environments. So if you want to run them with GPU or CPU, this is also another important factor that affect the selection of the dependencies. So it's not just uh, the different version that you 
typically need to select when you select a specific package, but also there are different type of uh, um, version that can work on specific runtime environment. So maybe it works on uh, UBI 8, but it does not work, uh, for example, on Ubuntu or on Fedora, or there are some different type, type of combination. And as you see, the space of combination is uh, very large, not just the dependencies, but there is also all the layers on top of it. So if you have Python, different version of Python, this is also impact the, um, the selection of the software stack. And the third goal is that uh, we don't want the human to do this. So we want actually bots to automate all this work. So to maintain these dependencies up to date, to verify that there are no CV in your software stack, verify that uh, this is the most performance software stack that you should use for your application. This is something that we, work, we want to automate completely. So we want the bots to take care of it. And you should just focus on your, pro on your project, on your problems, on the real problems that you need to solve. But let's go ahead. So how Thought can help the developer? We mentioned already some of this, but uh, basically we want to keep dependencies up to date. So you don't have to focus on that. It's the bot that is gonna come to your repo, open pull request and update your dependencies with a specific justification. So maybe there is an increase in performance or this package is not um, secure enough uh, you there are too many cves and uh, the community is not uh, maintaining that package so you should be warned or you should uh, uh, use another version which has um, less vulnerabilities so all this kind of thing can be completely automated by the bots and by the thought services so we want to maintain the software stack for the secure for the performance software stack for your ai application and we will we will integrate always more knowledge into thought in order to provide better recommendation and better justification of why some decision has been taken by the bots or by the thought services itself in order to make your life easier and to basically offload that from you. So you don't need to go and update the dependencies unless there are some specific requirements, of course, but uh, in general, this is something that can be automated completely from the bots and they can take care of it. And uh, what we, how we can also help the developers is basically uh, integrating our services into the day-to-day -day developers tools and data scientist tools. So let's, so let's have a look at the integration that Tot provides. So Tot integration are, of course, there is a command line tool, so which is called Tamos. So if you're using your lap, you're on, on your laptop or on my machine, I have a certain uh, operating system, a certain Python version and I want to start my project, but I don't know what is the best software stack for this specific environment, because uh, it's not only about taking the latest one, but some of the packages actually cannot be installed in certain environments. So instead of going there and then look for debugging and trying to solve that, I can immediately ask a service that uh, is already uh, has already that knowledge and can give me directly the, the software stack that will work on my machine. And this is the CLI. Then we integrate with the data scientist tool. So we have Jupyter integration. You can basically go to your notebook and uh, that is something that uh, we strive for is to help the data scientist in reproducibility and shareability of the notebook. Many times we see many repos with notebooks and dependencies which are not maintained, first of all, and uh, that the dependencies are installed directly with the pip install from the no notebook cells. This is something that uh, uh, basically breaks the reproducibility. There is no way to reproduce that uh, notebook if I run it today, if I run it in a week, in a, if I run it in a month. So this is something that we don't want and we want to help the developers uh, solving that problem. So we created some integration for Jupyter notebooks. So basically there you can select your notebook using the UI, using the CLI, or using the uh, magic commands present in the notebook. So you can just ask for a specific package and then the extension will take care of it. So it will use, reach out to Thought Services, it will create the uh, software stack, pin down to all version with all the ashes and store everything in your notebook. In this way, when you basically give this notebook to someone else, 
they could reuse the same extension and say, okay, this is the software stack that uh, my colleague was using or that this uh, contributor was using upstream. In this way, we can basically um, improve this and uh, this will benefit uh, all of us because if I want to try an experiment that another person did, then if the first thing that should I do is to install the dependencies. If I cannot install the dependencies around it, then I cannot reproduce the experiment. Um, then we have the bots. So the bots, we talk about them. We want to automate many of these things. So Kebeshet bot is the one that takes care of, of the dependencies. You can install it from the marketplace. And once it's installed, it can immediately start um, taking care of your dependencies. So it will look for specific uh, uh, dependency management files. So we focus on the Python ecosystem, as I said at the beginning. So it's going to look for pip file, pip file log, for requirements, txt, requirements .in, and it can take care of these dependencies automatically. Then, of course, we want to integrate in uh, source to images. So if you want to have container images which are based with thought services, you can integrate and receive recommendation on your software stack during the build. So if you integrate this in CI, for example, and you ask for security, then thought services can reach out and see if the software stack that you're going to build is going to be like secure enough or the, the CI will immediately fail because there are some packages which basically do not uh, come from uh, a trustful source. And this basically is important in order to maintain a secure pipeline and secure uh, images before you deploying in any production environment. And we want to optimize deployment pipeline. So this is similar to um, part of the topic that we're going to consider today. This is, let's say, a first step of the goal is to have an optimizing deployment pipeline. So it's going to know, it's going to learn, thanks to the knowledge, what is the best uh, deployment that you should use. So from the software stack point of view, the runtime environment point of view, this is the best that you should use in order to get uh, the most performance for your model. And this is something that we will see in a moment. How you can interact with Todd. So you have all this integration, but the point of interaction is all in this uh, specific configuration file. So in this configuration file, you can basically state which kind of requirements format you're going to use. So if it's pipenv, if it's pip tools, if it's um, poetry, so all these kind of uh, requirements are can be handled by the system. And then you can basically state a random environment. Uh, so if you're using uh, Fedora 34, or you're using UBI 8, you're using Ubuntu, all these random environments can be stated. And based on the knowledge that Todd has, then we can provide this uh, recommendation. Of course, not all the random environments are supported at the moment. But if you have interest or if you have some specific requirements, you can uh, uh, reach out to us and we can uh, discuss about it. Um, as you see, there is only there is not only the operating system, but there is the Python version. If you use CUDA, so if you have images with GPUs that needs to be used, and the type of hardware, of course, that uh, you're going to provide. This configuration file can also be automatically discovered. So there are some commands in the CLI or in the S2I and uh, the notebook integration. So all of this can automatically discover this information from the system. So actually, you don't need to uh, uh, provide them unless you have specific requirements. MLOps relation. Um, so let's talk about a little bit uh, like a general example of uh, what happens in machine learning lifecycle of your project. So you have your project stored typically on a specific uh, uh, GitHub, GitLab. So these places where you can uh, uh, work with your teams. And I am a data scientist. And what I will do is to use a specific platform. For example, I can use uh, Operate First Environment, which is the open environment uh, that uh, has Open Data Hub deployed on top of OpenShift. So there you have an open environment where you can start and experiment with all these uh, tools, Jupyter Hub, Jupyter uh, Lab, Elira. You have Kubeflow, Tekton. So basically, I have all my environment to start doing my data science project. So I use notebooks, I create pipelines, I can re-trigger my model, uh, the training of my model. So all the things that and the tools that are required for the data scientist are there. So this is the first part of the machine learning deployment development. 
then every time I basically make changes or I want to freeze my specific uh, project in a certain uh, moment in time, then I will use uh, releases. So this is something that you do with CI CD. You can do your CI checks, you can do the builds. And in this way, um, the project can be um, basically tracked and everything is basic is always uh, coming from the source of truth, which is your GitHub repo where everything is stored. You have the, the Kebashet bot, for example, that maintain your dependencies, update, so you don't have to do anything there. The, uh, the CI is uh, all automated. You, what you have to do is just release. And then you have the last part, which is moving to the stage and prod environment. In these environments, you have, uh, can be completely automated for you if you use something like uh, Argo CD and Prometheus and Grafana for monitoring. So these tools can help you uh, to have automatic deployments, automatically monitoring. If there is some data drift for your model or anything is happening, you can check for the metrics. And uh, this can re-trigger again, for example, a new training, or it can provide, it can um, new training with a new data set, or maybe there is a new software stack that can trigger again a new training or uh, something in these uh, life cycles. And this is basically what uh, look like when you have to describe what is happening from the model training. So you have the model that is, a, that is trained with a pipeline. You store it uh, on some specific place, cloud storage, on GitHub, if, there is a, uh, if it's not big enough. Then you create an image out of it, you test this image, and you push it to the registry. Then basically the manifests are updated through the pipelines and Argo CD can be triggered based on these changes and uh, redeploy the model with the new version. Then the continuous uh, monitoring will, appear, will continue. And if there is anything like a data drift or anything wrong in the metrics, then you can have alarms and you can re-trigger the pipeline. So this is all something that this can be completely automated. So if we focus on this, uh, let's say three big, big uh, uh, parts of this schema. So the first one is the model deployment. You have continuous training. The second one is the CI CD. And the third one is the continuous deployment and monitoring. So where do we want to add this uh, feedback? So now we see where is the new pipeline fitting in this context. So what we want to do is to provide this feedback as early as possible. So you don't need to move to the next stage and prod already, but you can immediately receive the feedback about the deployments. So is it the model that I just created as a data scientist that needs to go into another environment, is going to behave in the same way, is going to provide the same performance, or we need to tune or adjust something? So this is, these are a question that uh, we want to uh, answer as soon as possible, because this will speed up the process, of course, reduce cost, because we don't need to focus a lot, uh, or let, we need to focus less on these problems and more on the general idea and problem and that you're trying to solve. And so this is where we are going to fit this uh, new pipeline. So as soon as I open a pull request, basically the CI can start and one of these checks or one of these pipeline will be the one related to this feedback. Of course, there are some inputs and checks that needs to be done, but we will see them in a moment. Why, what, and when? Why we already specified why, basically. We want to speed up the process. We want to reduce the cost. And of course, this is related to the life cycle of the application. So when you build a model, it's not a static model. This will change in time because the data will change, because the uh, inputs and the data set will change. So all these things, or the, the software stack will change. So all these inputs can basically change um, the app application life cycle. And so you, we want to help them uh, basically uh, offload this part of the work and they can focus on modeling and data. What feedback? So the feedback that we're going to provide is basically metrics. So metrics related to the model, metrics related to the application, so latency and uh, uh, CPU usage, memory usage, and also the uh, platform metrics, of course. So we target different personas. So this feedback can be useful, not just for the data scientists because they are gonna focus on uh, some specific uh, metrics, but also on the AI DevOps. So if there is latency, latency, memory consumption and CPU usage. 
when do we want to give this feedback? So as soon as there is some change in any, in any of these uh, specific things. So the software stack, the model version, data set version, but there could be also other type of triggers. How to use it? In order to use it, there are uh, some requirements, of course, that you need to have. You need to install the RCCI. This is something that you find in the GitHub Marketplace. It's very uh, quite easy and straightforward to uh, install it. Same for the bot. So we have the Kboot, which is basically another, the GitHub uh, app version of the uh, Kbshet bot, which is the one that is running the services. You need to have a model to be deployed in your repo because uh, you want, I mean, this pipeline works because there is a model to be deployed. And you want a test. We will talk about the test in a moment. So the ACI, this is where you find it on GitHub Marketplace. This is just what you have to do. You will find the install button. How the ACI interact. Uh, we saw the TOT configuration file. ACI is an ACI YAML file for configuration, where you can state basically the build that you want, what base image you want to use, the source strategy of the build, and the registry you want to push. If you have also this model, as I said, so you can also automate the process of updating the manifest. So if you have a specific tag after a release, this can be automatically updated by the bot and our CD can be triggered because immediately see that there is a change in the manifest and can redeploy the model for you. Deployments, there are several types of deployments, uh, Flask application, Cave Serving, Seldon, TensorRT, we can go ahead with this list. But uh, for the moment, we'll, we'll focus on Flask application. Uh, this is the Kboot bot. You can also install it. As I said, there's basically triggering the Kbshet uh, services. And this is the, actually the library we use for the test. I will spend uh, just a few moments on this. Behave is a library that uh, basically allows you to create tests in natural language processing, and they are backed by uh, Python code. What I mean by this, let's have a look at this example. So this is the test that I want to use. I'm a data scientist and I want to use this test to gather some metrics for my model together with my colleague that uh, takes care of the platform and application metrics. So I will write this test saying that uh, if I have a data set and I have a deployment of this model, then I want to run this test on the predict endpoint and gather metrics that I can use. And this is the Python part. So the back of this uh, basically NL and natural language uh, uh, definition of the test, you have uh, some Python code. So the first part would be the data set availability. So check where is the data set and download it, take the deployment and check if it's available and so on and so on. The pipeline and uh, the example of the results. So let's have a look at the pipeline itself. Uh, the pipeline is triggered, as I said, when you basically modify anything in your project and you open a pull request, you either modify the data set, the model, or the software stack, the inputs are checked. And this means that uh, we'll, we're gonna check if there is a model to be deployed, if there is a test to be used, because the test we expect to be created by the users. It's not something that we can automate uh, yet, but uh, this is something that uh, the user needs to provide because actually the metrics of the model depends on the type of application that you are, you are creating. And so this is specific to the data scientist. Then we will configure the pipeline. So we use the SOE configuration file and we start building the image and push it to the registry. Then we're gonna deploy the image. And once the deployment is done, we discover the route and then we run the test. So we, the specific test is run against the deployment and the predict endpoint. And at the end, the metrics will be basically shown in the in the pull request. And this is an example of the result. So this is just uh, the bot that is commenting in my pull request and telling me what kind of test was run, in which namespace, and the metrics related to the model and the application. So everything related to, to um, specific for data scientists and also for the AI DevOps engineer and the platform metrics to know basically if the deployments requires more memory on, or more CPU in order to improve these performances. If you have any question, please reach out to us. We have a Thought Station website and on, we are on GitHub, so you can open issues and reach out there. And we have, these are the links for the ISO ECI, for the Kboot. And if you are interested more into what 
Tot is doing, you can check uh, the YouTube channel. There is more about Tot, the services, how everything works, how do we provide the recommendation, reinforcement learning that we use in the model, in the uh, Tot services. And then you have also a link to Operate First if you want to basically join the open community and learn more about uh, um, all this uh, data science part and also operational part, then you can go there and start playing with our tools. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and uh, I'm open for any question offline. And if you want to reach out to us, uh, thank you very much. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.